Good evening and welcome to the Board of Mayor and Alderman Workshop. It's October 28th, 2021, and it is 6.30 p.m. Call this workshop to order. We do have a quorum. The prayer Tuesday night will be by myself, and the Pledge of Allegiance will be by Alderwoman Honeycutt. Uh, everyone should have a copy of the minutes from the October 5th, 2021 regular meeting. First, we're going to move on to presentations. Can I have Chief Davis, please? And additionally, can the Isabel family please join me? So I have a proclamation here. Um, Halloween is, is widely as a widely celebrated tradition in Laverne, as many of our Residents and children participate in trick-or-treating. We have hundreds of children walking door-to-door -door in neighborhoods, collecting candy, going back and forth across the street. There's, with that occurring at night, that increases the risk for things to go wrong. And so um, I, Jason Cole, the mayor of Laverne, I'm proclaiming October 29th through October 31st, Halloween, as Halloween Driver Safety Weekend. And I want to urge all of our residents and anyone who's watching this to please take extra precautions this weekend in order to protect our most valuable resource that we have, our children. <coughs> and as we drive and we celebrate Halloween. And Chief, would you like to add some of the, the items that y'all are doing? Uh, as we do every year, uh, we have offices that will be out in the neighborhoods. Uh, they're going to be more visible uh, with their lights on the thing so, so the residents can see uh, the offices in the neighborhoods as well as uh, patrolling that way. Other motorists and other people can slow down while they're on the roadway. So we're going to do everything that we possibly can to be proactive as we do uh, every Halloween. And just encourage everybody to slow down and look both ways and I chat with a little ghost and goblins running across the street. It's a partnership, so it's not just yes. the police, it's, it's our residents too. We need everyone to come together and do their part. Yes. So with that, I want to present you this proclamation, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to say <clears throat> thank Mayor Cole and uh, Chief, Chief Davis for this. And um, uh, on the um, HIP Laverne website, there's a um, press release and a few other things, and there's a petition. And I know uh, most or all the roads in Laverne are 25 miles an hour, but the petition is to lower all the roads in Rutherford County to 25 miles an hour in all residential areas. And if people could look that up and sign that, that would be a good thing. You're, it, um, if, if you're hit at 25 miles an hour, your chance of survival is 90%. If you're hit at 40 miles, it goes down to 10%, and my son was hit at 43. So, um, you know, like I said, if, if you would, please sign the petition. All right, thank you thank again. You. Appreciate it. Thank, thank, you, right. thank you, sir. Thank you. Next. If I could invite Raymond and Betty Jean Newman up here, please. <laughs> well, well, ladies and gentlemen, if, if y'all don't know this wonderful couple on Halloween, they will be celebrating 60 years of marriage. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That is a feat in this day and age, much less any other. Yeah. So, long time. Long time, <laughs> as he said. <laughs> so, the city of, of Laverne 
wants to present y'all with a certificate of recognition for your love and commitment to each other as you celebrate your 60th wedding anniversary on October 31st. Okay. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. That's a wonderful achievement. Congratulations again. Mr. Mayor, could I add a little bit of something to that? Absolutely. Uh, your granddaughter sent us a text message and told us that this young couple of 60 years were also, they helped build City Hall and the pavilions, and they, they sent me a black and white picture. Uh, she's not sure of the year, but uh, they're standing out in front of the Laverne City Park. And uh, it's got a picture of her grandmother uh, when she was a very young lady, so uh, 60 years, and, and some of the stuff that your granddaughter uh, sent over to us and some of the accomplishments that you guys have done is absolutely phenomenal. So as the mayor said, congratulations, and uh, I hope we can get another 40 or 50 years out of you. And thank you for giving us a place to come to and, and do this. Thank you so much. And just when we were talking before the meeting, I, I think uh, she said that it was a old timers festival here at Bicentennial Park a while back. So. That, that, that's definitely uh, some memories when it was here. So Good stuff. Thank you so much. Tuesday night we'll have departmental reports. Then moving on to old business, second reading, ordinance 2021-28, an ordinance to amend the City of Laverne zoning ordinance by changing the official zoning map of uh, for tax map 14F group A parcels 1.01 .01, and tax map 14 parcels 36 36.01 and 36.02 consisting of approximately 8.62 acres located adjacent to 301 Bill Stewart Boulevard from a R1 low density residential zoning district to a PDR planned density residential zoning district with a R2 medium density residential based zoning district. This received a favorable recommendation from the Planning Commission on August 31st, 2021. There will be a public hearing held on Tuesday, November 2nd at 6.30 on this. Any questions? I'll just stick by my guns and say that uh, I'm absolutely 100% against this. I think that there's too much out there already, and until we can get all that straightened out, I can tell you that I absolutely will not be for this come vote time. Moving on to second reading ordinance 2021-29. An ordinance to amend Title II of the Laverne Municipal Code by adding a new Chapter 9 entitled Laverne Beautification and Arts Advisory Committee. Is there any questions? Seeing none, second reading Ordinance 2021-30. An ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2021-2022 general fund budget. Again, is there any questions or discussion? Moving on to the consent agenda. A, approved city bids and purchases. Miss Felicia. Um, the first item on, the, on this is the change order for the library. It went a little bit over what we had asked for because some other items needed to be painted. So just getting approval before we pay it for the difference in the, with the library. And that went over by 1200 Yes, I think it is. Right about $400 here. Okay, any questions? Any questions? And then we have the contract renewal for target solutions for the fire department software. This will be in three separate years, but... And this is the software that... Uh, they're currently using. 
yeah, that chief uses to track both equipment, the fleet, staff, the whole works. Yes, sir. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Moving on to C. Approve asset forfeiture sharing agreement with the United States Drug Enforcement Administration. This is um, basically the city of Laverne, the Laverne Police Department has assigned an, one officer to the DEA task force. We've done that for several years. Um, and because of the participation in this program, um, a portion of the forfeiture, forfeited proceeds will come to the city of Laverne. We don't know what that amount will be, but uh, by entering into this, we're, we're able to uh, participate in that, whatever is awarded by a judge. Is there any questions? Okay, moving on to D, approve renewal of employee benefits package for 2022. This is just our annual renewal. Is there any questions? Moving on to E, approved professional service agreement with Reagan Smith Associates for the design of improvements to Fergus Road and the realignment of Hollandale Road. This was discussed a few months back um, about doing some improvements to that road to um, reduce speed and uh, hopefully reduce some accidents and, and improve pedestrian mobility with via sidewalks. So this is the uh, agreement for that. Is there any questions? So this is, uh, so we're gonna pay these people $296,000 and then they're gonna come back and report back to this board on the best way to handle that and then we'll vote on it. So this is, they're going to design it and we're going to then basically decide to fund that design. So they're basically drawing it up, saying how much right of way is going to be needed, what not, what changes will need to be made, and we'll have a price tag with that, and then the city will decide to fund that or not. And what about, because uh, I know before when Adam talked, and there was a lot of uh, different choices that would be possible, are they going to include that so we can pick from those choices of what we do? Or So if you look in the scope, um, they go through as far as what all they're looking at, um, installation of new sidewalks, curb and gutter, drainage improvements, uh, shoulder improvements to Fergus, the realignment uh, uh, to become a fourth leg of Fergus and Sand Hill intersections. It, it's, that's the, their scope of work, as well as uh, many roundabouts at Fergus Road, intersections at Heritage Circle North and Jones Mill Road. I guess I'm just not clear because we talked about different ideas about what we wanted to do, but we never settled on one idea. The, at least from my recollection from that, it was we were looking at we were going to look at all of it. The right. only thing that was really up in the air for discussion wise, which we needed the engineering to be able to make this determination is um, when we discussed the Jones Mill mini roundabout, whether it would be a larger one that, in, that incorporates another road across from it or diagonal from it or not, which we needed the, the engineering for that, but that we were looking at all options, widening the curve, putting in mini roundabouts to slow speed down, as well as realigning Hollandale to Sand Hill so that you have one four-way stop versus two three-way stops. I, I agree. I just want to make sure folks are going to be watching at home that they're, they're going to come back with, they're still going to come back with two or three recommendations of what maybe we need to do, or, or, or when they come back, they're going to say, this is what needs to happen. That, that's what they're going to look at from their professional standpoint. They're going to say, this is what needs to happen. Okay. Sorry to be so dumbfounded. I just want to... No, you're fine. Make sure. You're fine. See, what they're trying to do, obviously, is to in, in, ensure that they have a good, safe road as well. That's, that's the important thing. Obviously, speed's been an issue. Accident's been an issue. So we're utilizing this group with their knowledge and 
um, abilities to ensure that we get the best product for our citizens. With Jones Mill and uh, Sand Hill and Hollandale, we got three collector streets right there together. If, you know, if we can get Hollandale and Sand Hill maybe together and do some uh, improvement to you know Hollandale and maybe do some uh, work on that sharp curve right there, you know that that will help everybody. I remember when. Uh, before the city punched in Bill Stewart, you know, people had to go with Hollandale all the way around, all the way around. And when they punched in uh, Bill Stewart, you know, that, that really opened that section up. And this is probably just going to be the next step in improving, you know, that area for traffic flow because in the mornings and evenings, <clears throat> you know, a traffic is an issue there like, like most other places in Laverne. Uh, during the day, it ain't too bad, but during the rush hours and morning and evening, you know, you know, Laverne is getting to be a, a pretty real gridlock in mo most places like the old Nashville Highway and Walden Road. And uh, even down on near Shryman, uh, you know, traffic, traffic, we have, over the years we made it better, <clears throat> but, you know, it's still, the whole Middle Tennessee has grown so much, you know, the Middle Tennessee during the rush hour you know, it's, it don't flow like it did when I was a kid. <clears throat> Moving on to F, approve. Hold on, hold on, I got another question. If we, sure. uh, and it's probably way too early, but I want to ask just, uh, if, we approve the, if we approve this on Tuesday night, mm -hmm. will it come back for a second reading? No, this is part of the consent agenda. Oh, this is part of the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have any kind of, or is it too early to tell about a time frame as far as getting, getting it back? Is there a time frame yet? So the report of the state of the health is 365 days of delivery. I expect it probably won't take them that long to finish the design. I think reasonably, just depending on survey availability, 10 months would probably be right around where it's at, but I do believe Scott was ready to get this here. And he could probably, I think he'll just agree when we're ready. Can you, can you please come up here so the people at home can, can hear? The question was, was once, if this passes on Tuesday night, what kind of time frame will it be before you will have this back to us? Right, so Scott Neeson with Reagan Smith, we appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, Vice Mayor, uh, we would look to be out on the ground uh, as early as next week, starting with the survey activity. So, try to get out of the out of the shoots uh, as quick as possible. Um, I think Adam's perspective on the on the timeline is is reasonable. I think your question earlier was really related to here. We've got four or five options, and I think what we're, we'd be looking to do is establish footprint of all these type of improvements, see what the impacts are, and then come back to staff and to the city and identify, you know, put some cost to those things and let you all decide where, where the bang for the buck is. So uh, I think certainly within that 10 month period uh, to 12 month period, we can have all those products to you get a go, no go on each of those elements and then start working on right away acquisition if it's necessary, utility relocation as necessary, and then on to construction bidding. So, but, okay. but it's a, I think it's an exploration period. It's survey, it's identifying the utilities and then exploring the options with the roundabouts, the realignment. We've got a little geotechnical um, coordination that we want to do to understand what those costs might be as far as particularly in the Hollandale realignment and then um, be working towards kind of laying out what that footprint, what the impacts would be and let, let the city decide what, what the right options are from there. But let's put some real, real survey on the ground and get some real data to see kind of what, what those impacts are and see where the bang for the buck is. All right, I appreciate it. I just want yes, the sir. folks that's going to be watching this at home to understand where their $296,000 is going. Absolutely. Plus, you know, 
Absolutely. Well, well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Moving on to F, approve professional services agreement with Kimley Horn and Associates for the design of improvements for Old Nashville Highway. And uh, this is very similar to what we're, we've been discussing with Fergus as far as uh, it's putting together a plan. We anticipate there's been a lot of discussion with federal government about a federal infrastructure plan. So uh, with the potential for that funding being available um, and being listed on the MPO, um, we want to go ahead and get Old Nashville Highway in a place where if that does become available, we can go ahead and put in for those funds and show we have that plan ready. I think it's been long overdue, so um, it's something that, that we can do to get this all set up and ready to go. Any questions? I do, Mayor. I just want to, has legal looked at both these uh, agreements? Have we satisfied ourselves with that? Evan? No, sir, I haven't, but I, I will before the meeting. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Moving on to new business. First reading, Ordinance 2021. Dash 31, an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2021-2022 general fund budget. And um, this one is, let's hop down here. Mayor, there's nothing in the packets for numbers 8, 9, and 10. I was just noticing. Because it is contingent on item number 15. Okay, well, we will jump down to number 11 then. And that's resolution 2021-29, a resolution authorizing the city of Laverne to participate in the public entity partners property conservation matching grant program. This is a 50-50 grant, uh, reimburses up to $5,000. Is there any questions? Seeing none. Looking at uh, resolution 2021-30, a resolution of the City of Laverne Board of Mayor and Aldermen to declare a property owned by the city to be surplus to the city's needs and directing disposal of the same. This is 10 vehicles, which are surplus police vehicles uh, that are no longer in use and basically prepared for auction. Is there any questions? Just gonna one, one question, the obvious one, when this goes out, all the decals will be removed? Yes. Yes, we've discussed that and now that's that that's with streets department. So yeah. <laughs> Moving on to thirteen, resolution two thousand two thousand twenty one dash thirty one, a resolution to accept the cottages of Lake Forest phase seven subdivision. This received an unfavorable recommendation at the September twenty eighth, two thousand and 21 Planning Commission meeting. Is there any questions about this? Why did it receive an unfavorable? I can't remember, I watched it. So, so um, if I'm remembering, they didn't complete their punch list. Um, that's correct, that's what I remember, that was correct. So because of that, the uh, Planning Commission went ahead and we did not have a representative at that time, so um, we went ahead and um, gave a unfavorable recommendation. So are they going back to the planning commission or they got it? Well, they're going to come here. We're going to vote on it. It, it, com it comes here. So it's on the agenda. So we vote on it and you can, we can either um, accept it. We can reject it or we can defer it. Uh, but um, basically th those are our options. I think that's a no-brainer. Any other questions? Okay. Number 14, motion to approve a letter of intent for D7-5LLC to purchase land located at 5175 Murfreesboro Road. You should all have a copy of this. This is the uh, where the city received an offer to purchase a stormwater building and uh, the board approved on September 7, 2021 to authorize me to negotiate the sale and lease back for this property. 
So um, the, you have everything in your packet. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, the, the offer that was made was quite a much less than the appraised value uh, of the property. That's that's one thing that it kind of concerns me. Uh, if, I, if I remember right, to the it was about a about a hundred thousand uh, dollars between the the offer that and, and the appraised value of it. Can anybody? Was that a question or just a statement? I just a question. To, uh, I just, uh, I guess we got a vote on it, but uh, just bring up, I can't understand why the uh, negotiation was so far between the, the appraised value and the, uh, and the offer. So the initial offer was $650,000. The appraisal came back at nine fifty, dollars and uh, the negotiated purchase price was $850,000 as well as a lease back program that would um, basically allow the department to stay in that building while we are working on building uh, the new public works facility. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I read that, but I, you know, I just, I can't, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, the way the property is selling these days, uh, most properties bring in more than the, than the assessed value you know, why, why are we even considering taking so much less is everything has been sold for the last six, eight months has brought, brought more than the appraised value. Well, you know? considering that um, leasing space for two years would be, for, for the departments in that building, would be more than $100,000, that lease back is part of why it's 850 instead of 950 or more. Plus, you also have to look that um, this would bring that property back onto the property tax rolls because it wouldn't be government use and can generate retail sales tax for the city. But on top of if that. we don't sell it, we don't have to pay rent. I mean, Correct. why is why, why so, a hurry to sell it now? We could keep it till we get the other facility built and, and, the, and the property would probably be worth more, appraised for more than 900 something thousand. I just don't understand the, the, the urgency of, of selling it so much cheaper than the appraised value. Uh, well, it's not so much cheaper. It's not, a, I mean, it's a, you're looking at 850 and $950,000. That's a hundred, so. it's about $100,000. And if you check the, the, the price of real estate been selling last year, Real estate's been bringing more than the appraised value, so if you been bringing that, in about a million dollars an acre, which this is less than an acre. But I, I just don't I don't understand why it's why we so hurried to sell it. Uh, you know we could we could we could keep it till we get the other, and then it would we could sell it then, and then who knows uh, a year or two or three years down the line it could be worth o over a million. I just don't understand the. Uh, we also don't know with the year, you know, two, three down the line, you don't know what the market will look like. You're estimating that we would have, you know, a, a bull market Looking where today, things are going to increase. You, you, but we're selling it below below market value. I just don't, I just don't think that's a wise uh, move for uh, dealing with uh, taxpayers' money. Well, when you include the lease back, which would be what if more we than hundred thousand dollars, we don't have to lease. you're looking at it being more than that. Well, we don't, if we don't sell it, we don't have to lease it. We already got it. Right, but you also you know, don't generate sales tax. It seems like we're, we're comparing oranges to apples to me, you know. It's almost, to me, it's, it's kind of a, a crap shoot, for lack of better words. Uh, Mr. Walden brings up a valid point, but at the same time, what if, all these what ifs, what if the property values drop in a couple of years? What if they don't? But if you sell it for eight hundred and fifty thousand, and you pay five thousand dollars a month, as opposed to selling it to for nine hundred and fifty thousand, they're going to charge you fifteen thousand dollars a month. The money's just going to be eat up over time. Plus, I don't know how much money you're saving sales tax and all of that. I, that's that's way above my pay grade so I think it's a crapshoot and a catch-22 but uh, 
sometimes you have to make tough decisions. If the property value goes up and that building's worth a million and a half in two or three years when the other property's ready, then you look bad. If for some reason the bottom drops out and that property goes down to 600000 then you're going to look bad. So it's, there's no, there, there, there's not a good answer. You know, it, it's, not, it's not a good business. To me, it's not a good business uh, deal to, to, to sell something less than what it's worth. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's just like you, uh, you're comparing oranges to apples. Uh, we don't have to lease. You're talking about $1,500 to lease something. We don't have to lease it. We already own it. Keep it uh, till we get the oven built. And the, the last three years, properties went up. And, and they ain't making no more of it. Um, I know my family's sold four or five pieces of property here in the last 90 days. And, it, and it's just for instance, one house we sold, it was praised for 230 It brought 287 uh, We sold a piece of property that an uh, acre and a third had nothing on it. It praised for 38000 It brought 167000 So, you know, property is, 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 is definitely bringing more than appraised value. Um, you know, I just, I just, I just not comfortable. Um, um, you know, it's like, to me, it's wasting taxpayers' money. You know, $100,000 is, 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 is money, you know, and it's taxpayers' money. And we was voted to the people to get up here to, to be good stewards of the taxpayers' money and selling something for, we know that's at least $100,000 under market. I just don't, I just don't see it, you know. It, I wouldn't do it if I had a... If I had a piece of property that was worth two hundred thousand, and somebody offered me a hundred thousand, I wouldn't take it. And I'm not going to agree to sell city property for anything less than what I do from my personal self. That's that's my opinion. Everybody's got to make their opinion. Uh, Anyone else? Uh, two questions. What did we originally pay for the building? Six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So we paid six 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 fifty for it. No. Are we sure about that? Bruce? Approximately. I don't remember the exact amount. I was on board when we bought that. We bought it. I, bought, I believe it was 575000 if I recollect right. But it was like back in 2007, 8, or 9. Mm -hmm. That was at least 10, 15 years ago. And we spent about $200,000 in renovations to the building. And my second question is... Uh, our estimated time frame to finish our new building for the city departments, what's our timeline for that? About two years. Two years. Now, I just don't see the rush. Uh, you know, if we, uh, if the building was, was, was already ready to go, move in, I, you, know, I, you know, I still wouldn't be comfortable of taking it less than market value. Um, you know, it, you got to say, well, why, why are we selling it so cheap? You know, it's, uh, is is somebody, uh, you know, I know it's not being done this way, but if you look at it from the outside, it says, well, somebody's getting a good deal on that place. You know, uh, you know, been on the on the council for a long time. You know, you know, uh, you know, I know the people involved. You know, would not uh, intentionally do something, but you know, it's just. It's just selling it below market value. I mean, if it was, you know, it needs, I think we need to at least get market value or more. That's what everything else is selling around. You can check, you can check the buyer's guide. Everything is selling above market appraisal value. No, one, one, one comment that was made was, uh, why are we in such a rush? There's, there's, this isn't a huge rush we had a group come in and make us an unsolicited offer and they're looking to establish a presence in Laverne and get that going through their corporate offices. So we went through the negotiation process and then brought that back. So there, that's, that's normal. I mean, with any process, we would sit down and talk with 
whatever that group is and negotiate with them. Does anyone have any other questions or comments? You know, do you, right off the top of your head, or maybe not, what, do you know anything about the taxes we pay on that building and stuff? It's city property, so we don't. We, we pay some kind of property tax, don't we? The city don't you know, pay no taxes. County, no. nothing? No, it's, it's, uh, it's off the tax rolls, so when it goes back onto the, the so tax if it rolls. it goes back onto it, then we get taxes from whoever buys it. You get property taxes, and uh, whenever retail is established there, there would be retail sales tax there as well. I see. That'd be generated. But, it, but as long as we use it, it ain't gonna generate no sales tax. Any other questions or comments? That's, that's exactly right. If, we, if somebody's, uh, once they purchase the building, even though we would be renting it, they would start paying taxes. Property taxes. Property tax, correct? Moving on to number 15, motion to approve premium pay for city employees. I spoke about this last month and we've tweaked it a little bit and changed a few things, but um, basically in March of 2021, the United States Congress passed and the president signed the American Rescue Plan Act, which is ARPA. Our portion of that should be $10.59 million. So this, the city will receive this in two payments. The first half of these funds will come from the state in November. And then the rest of the funds will come 12 months later. So one of the options that we can use this for is premium pay for eligible employees who perform essential tasks. So um, all city employees have continued to work and work hard to continue our city operations through COVID. So to show appreciation for their added risks working through this pandemic, um, I'm declaring all city employees essential and proposing that um, we use some of this fund for a premium pay for our employees. For full-time employees, it would be $2,500. And for part-time, it would be $750. Does anyone have any questions on this? Well, I don't have none. I think uh, the, uh, these, most of the city employees is probably on a, on a, a scale is probably uh, a little bit low, uh, needs, a, needs a, a, a raise. Uh, uh, but, you know, you know it, I'm all for what to help the employees, uh, especially the ones that's on the bottom of the totem pole. I think they need it the worst. Any other comments or questions? Now, if 15 is approved, we'll have to go back, and that's where in the agenda we it was mentioned about um, numbers 8, 9, and 10 where there would be a... Uh, uh, basically a budget amendment through the general fund, the stormwater fund, and the water sewer fund. So that breakdown is all in your packet. Moving on to 16, appoint or remove board and committee members. First off, we have got the Historical Preservation Advisory Committee. We have one, one term vacant, which was Gloria Victory, where she had resigned. We do have one applicant, Chuck Isbell. Um, if anybody else would like to apply, you can. We would just need that by Monday. And uh, this is where I will appoint it, and the board will confirm. Next, we have the library board. Brianna King has resigned from the library board, having moved out of Laverne. <clears throat> uh, we are advertising this on social media and on Channel 3. At this point, we have not received any applications and if we do not have any applications by the time of the meeting this will be removed from the agenda next we have the parks and recreation advisory committee um, we have one term vacant where Kristen morlock resigned uh, we have been advertising this on social media and on channel three we do have one applicant chuck isbel and this again is where i will appoint and the board confirms 
We also have the Planning Commission. We have two terms expiring, Earl Garvin Jr. and Aaron Holliday's. Terms are both expiring at the end of October. Um, we have reached out to uh, both, and Mr. Garvin would like to stay on the board, and uh, Mr. Holliday is wishing to come off the Planning Commission. So we do have one applicant, a Jim Hessman, and I appoint that board myself. So that will be on for Tuesday night. And then this is just an FYI for the board, uh, for the Laverne Housing Authority. Uh, the term for Deborah Bothrop will expire at the end of November. Uh, our city administrator has contacted her um, and he is waiting to hear back if she would like to remain on the housing authority or not. We are advertising this on channel three and on social media. This is just informational for the board. This will not be on the agenda come Tuesday night. So moving on to Mayor and Alderman comments. Alderman Waldron. Glad to see the Newmans here tonight. On the last meeting, I mentioned about y'all having a 60 year uh, anniversary and a lot of people don't know that the, the Newman family is, is, is kin to me in a, in a roundabout way by marriage. Uh, Ray, I know you don't claim me, but, uh, and Timmy, Timmy, he, he's done a lot of work for the city. He's laid the, the carpet in this, this room and he done the carpet as a library and he, he's, uh, he's a good craftsman. And, uh, Ray, when he was younger, he was a good craftsman. Betty, is he, does he do any work around the house now? I didn't think so. Thank, I'm glad to see y'all here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Alderwoman Honeycutt. Um, the only thing I have, I just want to congratulate Mr. and Mrs. Newman again on 60 years. I hope my husband and I can make it as long as you guys did. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Alderman Coates. Well, that was congratulations on 60 years. Good for you. And I'd just like to say everyone have a safe and happy Halloween and look out for those children on the streets and be safe. Thank you. Vice Mayor No. Uh, I follow suit. 60 years, that's amazing. I've been married three times. I can't even get close to that. So. <laughs> uh, Channel 5 News on the fire department. Ronnie Beasley, that was a great job you guys did. Uh, you... You and uh, his name went right out the window. Thank you, yes, uh, I didn't know anything about that, so that was uh, that was really good. Thank you, sir. Uh, there's a lot of things that's going to be happening, as you can see, a lot of a lot of road work, uh, and I've seen a lot of comments, heard a lot of things, and I just want to tell the people at home, you are 100% correct. <laughs> When the road work starts happening and we start, or not we, but when they start uh, fixing roads and things, it's going to be difficult. It's not going to be easy. You're going to have to be patient. There are going to be some detours because uh, it comes at a cost. Also, uh, I'm long-winded tonight, but I ain't had much to say the last few meetings. I met our grant writer the other day, or didn't meet her. I went in a to just talk to her man she's fired up she's doing a great job she loves it uh, i'm excited about that and then i'm going to turn to bruce and put bruce on the hot spot here just so some of the employees will know maybe they know maybe i don't know uh with the, some things that's going on how is our employee handbook doing it's still a work in progress uh, with the recent setback with uh, the HR department, uh, obviously that's going to set back this project a little bit, uh, but we're still hoping to get that to you soon uh, to review and hopefully approve. Okay, good. I, I, just, I hadn't heard anything about it. I just wanted to ask about it. That's all I got, Mayor. Thank you. Well, as the citizens can see in here, we've been working over the last few months quite a bit on roads, whether it's Fergus, Old Nashville, Waldron, Stones River, we are doing quite a bit trying to get our roads improved, get infrastructure improved, both water, roads, our police and fire. We are working aggressively to get that done. Um, I can't think of a time whenever we've had these many road projects lined up, ready to go. So that, that's a great thing to see. I do wanna congratulate our, our young couple here. They, 
60 years is just, that, that, that's, that's unheard of in this day and age, so bravo to both of you for that. Um, I'm, that, that that's amazing. Um, do want to thank our Parks and Recreation Department for both our zombie night at the park, which was very, very well attended, as well as our Goblins and Goodies event that saw the library, Inframark, uh, our senior center in multiple departments, handing out candy to, I would say, 3,000 or more children. Uh, most of the board was there, and it, it was a fun time for everybody. So um, it's, just, it's, it's definitely an amazing thing to see. With that, I call this meeting adjourned.